Hey guys, John Pio here, and today I want to show you something that every arcade player has come in contact with to play a game. And that would be the good old fashioned fire button here. Now, this design has been around for quite a bit now. Let's take a look at why it's uh, such a great design and how it actually works. Let's do it. Okay, here we have your basic fire button components, and there's generally three parts. One, the main housing, which is very simple, uniform construction, pretty much uh, as sturdy as it could be for plastic. It's consisting of three actual pieces. The outer housing that uh, has actually a thread around it. The inner housing, which is the button part that we're all familiar with. And that goes all the way through and actually... Um, is attached is actually one piece to these two pieces that respond every time I push and then inside there is a spring between both pieces so that there's a little bit of a tension to kick back the button after you push it it's pretty simple nothing unusual with that the next part would be the actual ring and the ring has some nice uh, some grooves on it so that it would be harder for it to unscrew during normal usage and that just goes over this so this would go into a hole on the uh, control panel and this would be underneath it to basically hold it in place simple and then the actual working part is the switch and this is a cherry switch it's known by uh, its name cherry switch in fact, manufactured in Mexico it seems okay and how this works is this little part right here that's the switch Okay, so, they are labeled, so uh, this would be the common, this right here would be the common, if you're familiar with electrical, this would be the normally open and the normally closed contact. Alright, so then you would have to just wire these up to your JAMA board or main machine, what have you. So now how do you put these all together? Okay, first off, you're going to want to put the ring, well, put this in the hole, and then the ring would go on it next. And of course, the groove side goes in first, so as to get a good bite on whatever it's supposed to be on. Now, there's no screws to attach this. It's just these little tabs, and there's a right way and there's a wrong way. Um, the wrong way would be to start by putting this tab in a hole. Remember the contact has to be touching one of these down here, so you want to put it this way, not this way. So the wrong way would be to do it like this and try to bring it in there because you might have to pull this just a little bit. And being that it's a shorter piece than this one, it's harder to pull. So you want to start by putting it in this one first. So we can do this like that. Just attach it like that. And then want to pull this just a wee bit so that it's on top of the switch, slide it in, and it just snaps. It's pretty secure. It's not going to come out until you actually pull it. So very, very simple design. Now, as you can see, the tab is now sitting, well, not quite sitting. There's a little gap, uh, but very, very close. And then when you fire, let's see if I can get a good angle. There you go. It actually pushes in the micro switch which would then change the internals here which would then uh, give you a contact and the computer or microchip or whatever's controlling the game would get the signal it's really really a great design a simple design and it's worked for decades very little change has come, come across this well there you have it that's the fire button that's how it works you can actually hear that click and I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, man.